Remote control trolleys are becoming more and more popular. And as they are something that you're going to be spending four digits on, you're going to want to make sure that you're getting the right one. Which is why today we're going to be taking a look at the three main brands of electric trolleys and specifically their remote control options just to see which one might be the best one to go for. So the trolleys that we're going to be looking at today include the MGI Zip Navigator, the Powercaddy RX1 and the Motorcaddy M7 Remote. All of which are fairly similar in design and fairly similar in price which we'll obviously get onto later on in the video but to start with let's get these open and just see what we're dealing with let's see if i can remember where i put my scissors so motor caddy and power caddy have both been around for a number of years here in the uk with it being difficult really to say that one was more popular than the other but with power caddy only just releasing a remote control model so i am looking forward to seeing what this power caddy one is like but then mgi on the other hand have only been here the last couple of years and they are based in australia and i believe to be the world's biggest electric golf trolley brand but of course there is much more to them than what first meets the eye. So one of the first things and most important to a lot of people looking at trolleys is the size of them. And looking at these three folded down, you can see that the MGI does look quite a bit shorter in height with the power caddy sitting quite tall, down to it not having the retractable front wheel as what's seen in its compact range and what the other two offer in theirs, it does make a lot of difference. But if you do desperately need the space, you can take that front wheel off simply by unscrewing the two screws in it. And to be honest, for the time it actually takes from folding the other two down i don't think there would actually be that much of a difference but you do just have to be careful not to obviously lose any of the bits off it if you're doing that but the power caddy then does actually sit a bit smaller on the width and also the depth as well with all of them having the option of the inverted wheels to help save space if you do wish to which in my car was actually needed and without the inverted wheels they wouldn't have fit but with how small my boot is i was still able to fit all three of these in so i don't think space should be too much of an issue with any of them and then in the weight with the mgi coming in the lightest and the motor caddy weighing the most both with and without the battery and speaking of the battery the standard amount of holes a battery will do on the mgi motor caddy is 36 compared to the power caddy which only offer 18 but to be honest like an 18 hole battery will most likely do probably about 27 on most typical golf courses the thing i was quite interested in seeing between these was the rear wheel because the power caddy and mgi both have the folding mechanism mechanism where you just fold it underneath the trolley which keeps it tucked underneath whereas the motor caddy is a retractable one which I thought would be a bit more of a pain but it's actually probably easier to do that as it is just a retractable pin that keeps it in place and you can actually do that with the MGI as well if you choose to but that just means that you need to make sure that you don't forget it or you just don't leave it lying around somewhere. The power caddy's rear wheel also doesn't extend out as far as the other two which I was finding a bit annoying as you'll see later on in the video and on top of that it also doesn't seem to clip in properly when you fold it underneath. It just wouldn't hold in place and it just kept flopping about and it just didn't seem like they made the catch properly for it and to be honest that doesn't seem good at all for a trolley of this calibre. But then moving away from the rear wheel, all three of the front wheels are obviously all free roaming. I can't really see any significant differences from one to the other. All three include the most popular and pretty much everything that you would need from the software side of things. Along with the DHC and the EBS systems which allow it to maintain the same speed when it's going uphill and downhill. Which is something that all three of them offer as standard. And all three see a USB charger under the handle just for charging your phone or your GPS or whatever you might need to charge. But a big difference between these which could lean you in one direction more than the other is the straight tracking technology. The MGI and Power Caddy offer this which will maintain its same course of direction even if it hits a bump and tries to straight offline whereas the Motor Caddy will start to veer off and you have to correct it back yourself onto the right path. But the one thing that MGI lack is the option for a GPS in the screen and having that put into the Motor Caddy would be an extra £200 and for the Power Caddy would see an extra £250 which you can find a watch or a handheld GPS to do the same thing for almost half of that price. Then for the remote controls, all three remotes are USB chargeable with the motor caddy and MGI being very similar. The power caddy then actually feels quite a bit less responsive on the touch and the buttons just seem to be a bit small and just comes across as being a bit more difficult to use. The time frame on the warranties is pretty similar with three years on the MGI trolley and charger and two years on the motor caddy and power caddy trolley and charger with the battery being five years for the motor caddy and power caddy and then three on the MGI but with a discounted rate for a new one on the fourth and fifth year. 
So given everything that we've looked at, it would appear that on paper, MGI would give you the best value for your money, mainly for the fact really that it isn't missing anything that the other two have, apart from obviously the GPS option, which as I said before, is something that you can get around easy enough anyway. Like it has the foldable wheel, which locks into place properly with the straight tracker, and it folds up to a pretty reasonable size, while also having a 36 hole battery that the power caddy doesn't have. So when you look at the price between these, it comes as a bit of a surprise to see that the MGI at £50 less than the motor caddy and £100 less than the power caddy. And that seems even more of a gap when you take into account that the MGI comes included with the umbrella holder and phone holder, something that would set you back a further £50 if you were to get the two in the other two brands. And obviously, if you feel like you need GPS with it, then MGI isn't going to be the one to look at. So between the power caddy and motor caddy, I think that the motor caddy might just top it between them two, in my personal opinion. And the main reason for that is because when I was testing this power caddy, it had literally only been out of the box for a couple of days. And well, to put it bluntly, it just stopped working. So basically the screen actually froze a couple of times, but it also just wouldn't go on a couple of occasions as well, which meant that I had to turn the battery off and on, which does take a couple of minutes for it to switch back on, meaning that by the time that I actually got it going, my playing group was already halfway down the fairway. And I would give them the benefit of the doubt and say that it is just a one-off because it can happen. And I haven't heard of any others doing the same thing. I do just think that they need to iron out a few things first, which is to be expected given that it is the first one that they've made. I think they mainly need to look at the back wheel though to be honest. As I mentioned it doesn't clip in properly when you're folding it away but because it also isn't very long it's not as stable as the other two and again I just didn't really have much confidence in it and I just kept feeling like it was going to topple over. The power caddy also kept disconnecting from the remote even when I wasn't that far away from the trolley and instead of being able to call it over it meant that I had to go back to the trolley and repair the remote again and even with the downhill control as well it sounded and seemed to work a lot smoother with the motor caddy although I'll give it that the power caddy did still do the job properly it just looked like it was making harder work of it. When I was testing the motor caddy and MGI together, I did feel a bit more confident with them and would have to say that these two seem to be very similar to one another. And if anything, I'd actually say that I preferred to use the motor caddy as the screen looked a bit easier to see and the button is a bit nicer to use, but I am just nitpicking a bit with that. So the thing that I thought was going to be the main difference with the straight tracker actually wasn't a massive issue not having it on the motor caddy as it probably just doesn't make as much of an improvement as I first thought it might do and the remote was also a bit easier to use with the stop button just under the forward button on the motor caddy which again is a minor difference but just made it that bit of a nicer experience to use so with the on course testing the motor caddy would take that crown for sure on top of as well a couple of other things that could sway someone more towards the motor caddy like the extra two years warranty on the battery over the MGI and for me in the UK I think motor caddy will hold its value better than MGI so given them things as well I'd probably have to say that the motor caddy might just edge it but it is a close call between all three of them to be honest and whichever one you went for you are getting a really good trolley but yeah I can finally say now that I am the new proud owner of a motor caddy M7 remote. And other than that, there is another trolley which I'll probably be asked why I didn't put in this test. Now, I was literally about to buy one, but there is a five week arrival time, so I did decide against the idea. But if I put it into the spreadsheet with the other ones, let's just see how it compares up from there. Now, they are no more Stuart for their follow me models, but the Vertex remote one is an equivalent to these that we've been testing today. And that doesn't have the follow me tech in it. And as you can see straight away, it is quite a bit dearer than the other three. Now, I had a really difficult time in finding anything on it as the website isn't that great and it doesn't really give much information out and there isn't any videos or anything on this trolley which I do find really odd but what I could find out is that the size seems to be pretty good but with it being quite a bit wider I'm taking a guess that it doesn't have the inverted wheels on it it also has a 27 hole and a 45 hole battery option with the 45 being even dearer the accessories though are actually priced quite well but don't come included like they do on the MGI it does have the down 
downhill control as well which is a big one which all the other three included so i would have been surprised if it didn't have that but it does appear to be missing quite a lot of the other stuff unless like i say they just didn't include it on the website which wouldn't really make much sense to me i think i'm going to have to review this on a separate occasion if you want me to review it just let me know in the comments and i'll give it a go if there is enough interest in it so make sure to subscribe to the channel if you don't want to miss that but yeah comparing this on paper it does seem to be quite overpriced comparing it to the other three and yeah that is all that we have time for today so as usual thanks for watching and i'll see you all in the next one